Hey everybody, it's Matt with Rocky's War Room. And today I have for you a painting tutorial of the Bormite Matronite Broodmother. I did not paint it in the art scheme that you have here on the, bar, uh, the box art, but you can apply my techniques with any color you have, uh, any color you want. Uh, blue, black, green, yellow, it doesn't matter. I decided to go with a brown look on the rock. And the first thing I did was take a brown red primer and sprayed the whole thing in a brown red primer. Then I grabbed the strong tone ink from the army painter range and put a strong tone wash over the entirety of all the rock parts of the broodmother. As you can see there, I'm just getting the rock, I'm avoiding the armor, I'm avoiding the weapons, and I'm avoiding all the globes and the hatchlings all over the model itself. Uh, I, put, I put it liberally down there to get all the crevices, made sure I get all the crevices, and the inside of the mouth. That's important too, because that's going to be a really dark area. We're not necessarily going to be dry brushing that. In the next step, we're going to take a large dry brush, and we're going to grab our flat earth color from Model Color Vallejo, and we're going to do a heavy dry brush uh, over the entirety of the rock, avoiding the weapons, the globes, uh, the the claws, the, 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 the teeth, uh, things like that, just, just over the, the rock. And I will tell you, uh, with this step, it's kind of a heavy dry brush. And what I mean by that is, is you get, you dip it in the paint, you get the majority of the wetness off the, of the paint, off your brush. Uh, you don't get all of it off. You just kind of scrape it on a paper towel, on a, a piece of cardboard or something like that to get the majority of the wetness off the brush. And then you do a heavy dry brush over the top of all the rock as you can see in the close-up there. Uh, I got a pretty heavy dry brush and it shows up and it keeps the deep dark colors in the crevices where you want them and you're starting to build up the color of the brown rock scheme I have. The next step is I take a 50-50 mix of flat earth and German uh, camouflage orange ochre uh, and with 50-50 with a little bit of water just to kind of mix it up and then I do another somewhat uh, heavy dry brush. Uh, it's not as, you don't want to do it as, as hard or as much. You want to get the majority of the paint off your brush. Because remember, you have to, when you're dry brushing, you want to get as much paint off the brush as you can. And you can put more on your brush and dry brush it even further. And we're putting it on all the entirety of the rocks, uh, avoiding the globes, the weapons, the armor, and things like that. What we're doing is, is we're building up our brown color with a yellow and mixing it in there. And as you can see, the details are starting to stand out a little bit more with this color mixing and this color buildup. Then we will do a German camouflage orange ochre, uh, very light dry brush, where you get the majority of the paint off the brush and just, just a little bit on the brush itself. And you build up that color on the rock. As you can see here, we're starting to see that the rock is starting to take shape. It's starting to have multi-colors. It's starting to get more definition to it and the recesses are really dark and the very tips of the rocks and gravel and stuff are uh, a light much lighter color this gives us definition and defines the the rock and the rock and gravel and things all over uh the the um oh brood mother itself sorry <laughs> uh and then um the uh, one of our final stages of dry brushing we're going to use a German camouflage orange ochre and a stone gray. Uh, we're going to do another dry brush of that, a light dry brush. And our final dry brush on the, just on the top is if the light is coming down, we're going to use stone gray. So you're just going to do a very light dry brush on the very top part of the broodmother, all over the very top, avoiding the bottom, uh, the sides, that sort of thing, just the top parts of the rock. And as you can see here, after doing those two dry brushes, really light dry brushes, get the majority of the paint off, avoiding the armor, the weapons, the Bormite Rider, uh, and all the carapaces and things that he has on hatchlings and globes. And as you can see, the rock is very defined. You can definitely tell what it is exactly. Um, it's a, just a, <laughs> a rock body <laughs> of the broodmother. Uh, and I think it turned out very nicely. Uh, we got a nice look. And I built up those colors with a series of dry brushing. The crevices are still dark. The high, high parts are very light. But just remember, just use that stone gray on the very top parts as if the light was looking directly down onto the rock. And that's where the light's shining the most is on the top parts of the rock there. So 
The next color we use is a light brown. And we take our light brown because we're moving on to the other parts in the rock, which are these hatchling uh, parts where they're kind of looks like flesh. Uh, I don't think it is flesh, uh, but it kind of looked fleshy to me. And <clears throat> the light brown is sticking with our, our, our brown scheme here. Uh, but this this bright light brown actually added a lot of contrast to those areas. And we're going to be bringing that down with a wash. But uh, for the meantime, uh, you just paint all those in this light brown color. And you can choose a color that works with whatever color you're coloring the rock. That uh, will give it that high contra contrast just like that, this has. And it would work just fine. And the next thing I did was I put a strong tone wash. From the Army Painter Quick Shade uh, line, a strong tone wash over the light brown that we just put down. Now I put it in the entirety. I brought that color back down, um, and I used a small brush so I wouldn't get it on the what, the work we already did on the rock itself. And then uh, I did a flesh wash. Oh, oh yes, I forgot to mention that I did paint the skin of the Boromite Rider, and I put a Army Painter flesh wash over the top of the light brown that I painted the Boromite Rider as well. That's my flesh color for the, uh, the Boromites. While that's all drying, uh, I grabbed a, uh, what is that, uh, Vallejo Ball Salt Gray, and I painted the entirety of his teeth. And I would paint, I'm going to paint the claws uh, on his feet the same exact color, but I'm waiting until I'm completely finished with everything on the top because you are going to be picking it up quite a bit and your fingers have oils on them and they're going to wipe the paint off. So I'd recommend after you did that dry brush over the brown at this stage to put some sort of brush on acrylic varnish over the top, letting it dry and then moving on to these steps because you're going to be touching it and possibly wiping the paint off. So that's ball salt gray on the teeth. Now while that's drying, I grabbed the flat earth, uh, the flat earth from Vallejo, the same color I've been kind of using, and I painted all the hatchlings on the body of the actual bro uh, brood mother itself. She's got little hatchlings crawling all over, and then I used strong tone, soft tone, and flesh tone just to give each one a different, there's one right there, each one a different tone or a different color so they're not all exactly the same. And I used those washes over the entirety of the hatchlings as you can see he's there and I got their teeth with the ball salt gray as you can see with a small brush and all I did was do a, a light dry brush over the top uh, of the ones on the outside and then I did a flesh wash on this one I did a strong tone on another one and I did a light brown on the other one just to give them a little bit more definition and let them stand out the next thing that I did is while those were drying, I grabbed the Dark Tone Quick Shade from Army Painter range, and I put, I painted that all over the entirety of his stone teeth. Um, this is our wash, this is our dark color, it gets in the crevices, it brings that ball salt gray down uh, a shade and darken, darkens it a bit. Uh, this is obviously going to take some drying time, so I would actually wait until it is completely dry. But if you want to keep going and you can keep your hands off the teeth, you can do that. Uh, and take the next color from Army Painter, or no, yes, Army Painter, which is Strong Tone. Uh, we're going to grab the Strong Tone back out, and we are going to go over the um, the skin, uh, the uh, tops of the, of the of the skin again we're going to take it and we're going to get put the strong tone on the insides of the skin the light brown that we put down doing a second wash over it kind of bring it down a little bit more as you can see it's starting to come together it's starting to darken down you're starting to see the definition in the light brown i really like that shot <laughs> And there's another one. And I painted the ball salt and I took the dark tone over the dark tone for the, uh, the teeth and claws on the hatchlings. Um, and there's a overall shot of how far I got so far there. 
and another shot of the rider. Oh, yes. And he had that flesh wash put on him. Uh, again, <laughs> I took the strong tone ink from Army Painter Quick Shades. And I covered the Boromite's rock or skin. Or not, not his skin, his rock of his body and uh, gave it a wash. Then I took light brown and skeleton bone. And I did a 50-50 mix with or a, a one-third, one-third mix uh, of water to those two colors. Army Painter Skeleton Bone and Light Brown to do a highlight on the skin of the Boromite Rider in the skin of the where we put the light brown on, on the skin parts of the rock there. And as you can see, it really brightened it up, but it made it, it gave it that, uh, as you can see, the dark tones are on the inside. It just gave it that extra, you know, I'm out, <laughs> out in the light kind of look. And the deeper recesses are, are, are still dark. And it's a little bit more transparent than you would have in just adding a little bit of water. With this, I made it a very uh, soupy or milky consistency. And I highlighted the rider's skin with that same color. Kind of gives the army a little bit of a uniformity when you do that. Here's another shot. I used a small brush for this. I left the recesses alone. I just got the tops and it's transparent. The next thing I did is I took the red tone ink and some Lamium Medium from Citadel. Uh, and I mixed the two together to form a, a very light or tra more transparent wash. Uh, and then afterwards, I took the red tone ink to show you what I'm about to do here, and I'll explain. So I went around the whole entire inside uh, of the light brown again with another shade, but this is the red tone, uh, around the whole entire inside and around the tops. The Lamia Medium mix with the red tone, it doesn't break down the pigment, but it actually makes it more transparent, and I just went over the brown rock parts around the opening of the the skin parts of the rock there. Then I took a purple tone ink from the Army Painter Quick Shade range, and I, I, I made it very thin with 50-50 water, and I put it on the rock around the skin there to make it look like that this is something that might be sore, trying to, you know, pus, uh, like, a, like a pimple. <laughs> that it's sore, that it's sticking out there, and she's giving birth to these little hatchlings. Um, and I put it around the whole entire outsides. It's a 50-50 it's a, it's a mix of, uh, of uh, water. It's a very thin, light wash. And it gives it that purpley, you know, sore look. And then I went over the very tops parts of the skin. Uh, the top parts of the skin around the hole there. And there's a good shot. You can see what I did exactly. As you can see in the skin parts, you see the purple, you see the red. It's kind of the same way you would do maybe... Uh, some monster skin of some kind. Um, you'd use a light color and you bring them down with these these purple and red and and pink tones and, and uh, light brown. And there's another shot of after afterwards what it looks like. It really adds some contrast. It really pops on uh, the rock. The next thing I did was used a German camouflage orange ochre again. And um, you notice there's a there's a theme here. It's the colors are, I dry brushed the, his rock, the rock skin that he has uh, over his head, over his back and his legs. And the theme here is I'm making coherency throughout the army using the same type of colors. If you remember, we dry brushed the entirety of the broodmother's rock back and everything in these same colors. Except this time, it's just over the entirety of his rock, just one color because he's so small. And then over the top of just the very top parts, like his knee, uh, his, the top of his head, the top of his back, I did a very light dry brush with a small dry brush over the top of that same rock of the rock rider there. As you can see, it added definition and made that rock really pop from the top there. As you can see, I only did it on the very tops. Uh, where the light was showing. Then I grabbed the stone gray again, uh, and see, same colors, using the same colors for uniformity throughout the 
the uh, the whole piece. And I dry brushed, which is now dry, the teeth that we uh, used a dark tone on with a heavy dry brush. And I got most of the paint off and I built it up. Uh, I, it was very light at first, so I just, you know, left a little bit more paint on the brush or added, actually, I added more. I did a second dry brush of the same color of stone gray over the top of all the teeth there. Uh, and on the inside teeth and the outside teeth. And it's okay if you get it on the rock uh, surrounding the brown rock. It actually adds a little bit more definition. And it looks like the colors are fading into the teeth from the brown to the, the stone. So we're, we're blending all these colors together uh, towards the mouth of the brood mother itself. And if you can see there inside the mouth, I did a purple and red wash on the inside. And then they were heavy. Uh, I made sure they were a heavy dry, uh, wash on the inside of his mouth, or her mouth, <laughs> for that matter. Uh, and there you go. Real nice effect uh, with the dry brush. <clears throat> and you can actually add more definition to this. Uh, to his teeth by adding maybe an off-white or a white uh, just just hit dry brushing the tips And as you can see I did a purple wash inside his mouth there or her mouth. See I keep doing that <laughs> And this I just did uh, To add a little bit more definition around the armor and kind of the blending the armor together because I am going to be doing a purple armor on him or her the broodmother uh, I did it around as you can see the gun the bottom of the gun as if the guns were you know, embedded into the broodmother's back. So I would imagine that it would be a little sore and purpley color. And that's uh, what I did. And as you can see, the purple parts are kind of <laughs> showing out like bruising. There you go. A couple final shots there. Well, that's it. That's the part one of the painting the broodmother. I really appreciate you sticking in there with me. Please join me for part two where we're going to go over the armor, the weapons, the globe on the, uh, the broodmothers, surrounding the broodmothers and finishing up uh, all of that stuff and highlighting and things like that. This video was just basically dry brushing and getting it prepared for the next step. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd really appreciate it. Leave me some comments if you have any questions. And last but not least, for me, to you. Ta-ta! And we'll catch you in part two.